In the 0.8 release of DuckDB, they added functionality that lets you add your own functions when using the Python package. I wanted to see if I could use it to generate dummy data. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. So we're gonna start with this file and you can see at the top, we've imported DuckDB and we've imported the faker package, which is used to generate fake data. And then if we come down on line five, we're creating a DuckDB database and it's gonna be in the file udf.duck.db. And then on the next line, we are instantiating faker. Now, what we're gonna to do to start with is we're gonna create a function called generate person and we'll, it's gonna be just a dictionary with a bunch of different fields. So we'll have a name, a city, a state, a zip code, a country, and then a bunch of other fields as well. And then we'll return that dictionary at the end. The next thing we need to do is register it with DuckDB. So we can call, in this case, con.create function, and then we need to pass in the name that we wanna use for that function, the actual function itself, so that's generate person, then any input params, and then what we expect the output um, structure to look like. So we are gonna build a struct type. And so that's what, that's what the dictionary maps to, and you can see we, we then need to list the, the keys and the, then the, the types of name is a varchar, city is a varchar, but then, uh, for example, birth date can be a, a date. Uh, once we've done that, we can basically use it inside a query as if it was the normal function. So in this case, we're gonna say, hey, I wanna select the generate function, generate person function, and then we'll call generate series, so we'll get 10 different rows, and then we'll iterate over the results and print them out. So if we now come over to the terminal, and we're gonna call our fake data pi script, and we can see we actually get the same one over and over again. So it's Troy Barnes, um, lots of times, so that's kind of interesting. So it looks like the, the function must be cached in some way. Uh, so I thought, okay, well, let's see what happens if we add in a dummy parameter. So we'll just call it a seed parameter. So we'll pass that in to the function at the top. Uh, that'll be a double. So we'll go down and update our function to say, hey, it's expecting a double parameter. And then finally, let's update our query and we'll just pass in the random function. And now if we come back to our command line again and we run it again, you can see if we scroll through the data this time, you can see we've now got unique people each time. Okay, so it cl clearly seems like it was caching that first version. So now what we wanna do is put the people into a table. So let's go and update that query. So we'll get rid of the rows because we're not gonna have any result. And then we'll just wrap our select generate in a, in a table. So we're gonna create or replace a table. And then we're gonna just select, and we're gonna call person.star from, and then we'll put the other uh, wrap it around our, our original query. Now what doing person.star does is it basically like expands out that struct. So instead of having a struct, it's gonna expand, explode it out into individual rows, which is exactly what we want. And then finally, let's just delete that fetch all at the end and we don't need to print out any rows either. Back to the command line again, and we're gonna call the, the script. And this time it'll take a little bit longer, so just a few seconds to run. And now we can open DuckDB using the CLI. As so we're gonna say, hey, I wanna call the DuckDB with the UDF, remember the, the file? And then we'll, we'll do a query. So let's see how many records have we got in this people table. So you can see we've got 10,000. And then we can do a select star from people. And let's just get three of them. And you can see, here we go, we've got the, the users. So the users have been successfully loaded into DuckDB. So I appreciate this is not the fastest way of generating data, but it does work. Uh, if you like this video, you'll probably like this other one, which shows you how to build composable queries when using DuckDB. And I'll see you in the next one.